Mm -hmm. Mayor Bauer? Here. Councilman Green? Here. Alderman Rip Purvis? Here. Alderman Welch? Here. Alderman Madbury? Here. Alderman Jones? Here. Alderman Jones, I'm sorry. Mayor? Okay, can we all stay? Russell, would you need to send the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, the highway of the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Okay, first on our agenda, we have some special, present, special presentations. Uh, Chief Garibay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tonight we are swearing in two new officers, as well as uh, promoting one of our officers to the uh, rank of corporal. So at this time, I'd like to call up Elizabeth McLean and Eric Erickson. Can you stand right here for me, please? I got strict orders from this lady right here to be on this side. <laughs> well, I want to get them. I'm going to make her happy, I promise. In the picture. <laughs> First of all, uh, Elizabeth McLean was born in Redlands, California. She has a degree in psychology and child development which geared her future toward the criminal justice field. Elizabeth started her law enforcement career with the U.S. Uh, her, her law enforcement career started when her husband joined the U.S. Coast Guard and moved uh, to the Victoria, Texas area, at which time she joined the Victoria Police Department. Elizabeth worked in, has worked in several divisions while at Victoria PD, including undercover operations, patrol, and cyber crimes, where she received an award for Rookie of the Year. Elizabeth holds an intermediate certificate, as well as other certifications that include T. Cole instructor, uh, it's called Rape Aggression Defense Instructor. She'll knock you out with some Taekwondo. SWAT hostage negotiator and a field training officer. Elizabeth has relocated to the has since relocated to the Galveston area and because of her husband in the Coast Guard and has realized how much she has missed the camaraderie between her brothers and sisters in blue and the connection she had with the community. She looks forward to getting to know everyone in Jamaica Beach and she is excited to serve our beautiful beach community. Elizabeth is married to her husband Derek and in her spare time enjoys photography and video games. And Derek couldn't be here tonight, Call of Duty. They had a search and rescue mission. And uh, actually, she says he's excited because since he's been here, he hadn't had one and he took off running, didn't even say bye. So we got it going. <laughs> Eric Erickson was born in Houston, Texas. Eric served in the U.S. Army. Thank you for your service for eight years and has uh, been deployed to Iraq twice. He comes to us with eight years of law enforcement experience. Eric holds an advanced peace officer certification as well as other certifications that include basic instructor, sexual assault, family violence investigator, mental health officer certification, he's FTO certified, basic evidence property technician certified. Eric is married to his beautiful wife, Lucia, and they have one son, Easton. In his spare time, Eric enjoys woodworking and creating life-size Star Wars props and wooden flags. Very proud of this. One of his uh, proudest creations was two American flags that he created and sold that sold for $210,000 at one of President Trump's fundraiser events in Florida. So he's very, very proud of that. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to sort you guys in at this time. Please raise your right hands and remember what I said on your name. I, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of the officer of the office of police officer of the state of Texas and will do the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States and of this state. So help me God. Congratulations. Please come up and do that. And the wife's upset because he's not wearing a uniform, so she thought she was going to be able to poke him, but he gets away <laughs> easy. Today. Responders 
to our military to, um, and to our veterans. So I'd like to present you both with, with a start from the Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma Thank you all. Ma Now, Corporal Saratan, will you come to the front, please? So most of y'all know who Matthew is. Um, <coughs> Corporal Pettit just uh, resigned here a few weeks ago uh, to join another agency, and without a doubt, we knew that we wanted Matthew to be our corporal. I mean, he's proven himself. He's shown himself his loyalty, his leadership, the way he talks to people. Y'all know I'm real big about that. The way we talk to our citizens, if you don't talk to them right, you don't work for me. And he, and he has shown every bit of that. So when me and Sergeant Dillon and Lieutenant Posey met, it was hands down. It was going to be Matthew Saratan. Matthew Saratan was born in Trinidad, Tobago. Uh, he has a degree in criminal justice and has been a police officer for 12 years. He has been with Jamaica Beach Police Department for a half, uh, year and a half. Matthew holds an advanced peace officer license and should be achieving his master license within the next couple of months. Matthew has also received the Congressional Police Officer of the Year Award in 2020 from Congressman Brian Babin. Matthew also holds several other certifications, including Bicycle Patrol, which he just went and got certified in, Mental Health Officer, FTO Certified, and Training Coordinator. Matthew's been with his beautiful wife uh, for 23 years, and they have uh, three children, uh, Dominic, Riley, and Donovan. In his spare time, Matt enjoys hanging out with his family, coaching the kids' baseball teams, and traveling to cheerleading events that I know his daughter's involved in. <laughs> so with that being said, we're going to swear him in real quick. Yes, sir. Use your right hand. Hi. Say your hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of police corporal of the state of Texas and will do the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States? So help me God. Congratulations, Corporal. Assault charges guaranteed. <laughs> Got it. Mayor and Council, thank y'all for the opportunity to do this. Before. <laughs> I'm over here. There's a little girl in town that uh, uh, most of you, uh, some of you know, I love working with children that have cancer. And because of that, on Saturday, my phone started blowing up about a little girl with terminal cancer from the Cleveland area who wanted to have one more wish was to spend time on Jamaica Beach. And we made that happen. Beach Bog Rentals uh, donated a place for them for a week. The restaurants down here have all given food for them for free. Um, you know, uh, the golf cart place, Rick's, donated a couple of golf carts. I also want to mention the mayor and uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Jocelyn. She put together with Academy, and what was the name of the group? Jamaica Beach Social Club. Jamaica Beach Social Club all pitched in, and we gave her a beautiful basket from the city with towels, a uh, little hat. She loved her little hat, by the way. And I mean, you name it, toys for the sand. Anyway, these are the kind of things that we want to continue bringing to this beautiful community. And we can't do it without mayor, council, and of course, you, the citizens. So God bless y'all, and thank you for the support. Okay? Yeah, and I would like to thank Jamaica Beach Social Club for stepping up and, uh, and, and helping represent Jamaica Beach in, in this uh, endeavor to help this little girl. So um, before we go to the public hearing section, I wanted to just remind everybody, to save paper, we don't print out the entire agenda packet for those in attendance. But if you have your smartphone with you, you can go to www.jamaicabeachtexas.gov, which is our website. There's a circle that says uh, agenda. If you, City Council, if you click on that, it goes to agenda. If you click on agenda, will be the date, so you can follow along on your phone uh, as we go through the topics. So uh, anyway, like I said, we, we don't print this off for everybody. And uh, okay, so Robert, if you'd like to call these things. Sure, we had, a, we had scheduled a public hearing, but we're going to pull that from the agenda. But uh, we have a, a planning and zoning meeting this coming Monday <laughs> that we're going to have a couple of cases before us. And then we will reschedule the public hearing for the next uh, council meeting on the 22nd of June. Okay, at 
evening. First council meeting for me. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Danny Little Brooks. I reside at 4120 West Bayside Way. What y'all are going to talk about is right across the street from pump station number seven. <laughs> uh, I've become intimately familiar with it with over the last three months. I've talked with Robert a couple of times, Russell, some other people. Um, for those that don't live there, you need to know that this has been out for three months. We've had a temporary generator there that is giving us temporary sewer service, but it cuts on 24 7, seven days a week, all the time. We hear about it from our neighbors, we hear about it from our guests, from our house guests. My family just left, they brought it up without waking them up at night. Uh, it's something that we live with and we're tired of. Uh, I think it's critical infrastructure for the residents and for the city. Should be considered critical infrastructure. Uh, I know it's taken Robert a lot of time to pull bids together, things like that, but I'm encouraging the city to, to find the funds to fix this so that we can all go back and enjoy our peaceful neighborhood that we had 90, 120 days ago. Uh, it's past due, I'm afraid if we leave it any longer, so else could go wrong the expense just gets bigger and bigger and it piles up and so I just want to encourage the city council to please give this serious consideration thank, thank you. you thank you okay next up uh, mr. Jerry Jackson I want to read along next time okay <clears throat> all right mr. Paul went I'm Paul Rett, uh, 16531 Mansfield. <laughs> okay, what I'm talking about is, um, of course, I'm a shoot some arrow. That's what Jose said about you shooting arrows if people want to ask questions. But um, <clears throat> during your campaign, you and Miss Jones uh, constantly said audit, audit, audit. I see nothing on this agenda about any kind of audit. Is that something that's not going to be taken care of now, or have I just decided to put that aside? Um. If I can, I'm going to address it in my mayor's report. Okay. Um, it is, I am going to speak to it. Okay. So, and then uh, also, what about this CARES Act and these policemen that have been overpaid? Is that done and over with now also that y'all have talked about during your campaign? Um, Ms. Carmack uh, left us before we could get any uh, official statements from her. So we are working on uh, how to do a, a finalization of the CARES Act. Okay. And, and on the previous uh, city council meeting, it was also addressed. And also, I would like to, uh, yeah, we'll keep going with comments. I'll okay. address it in the mayor's. Okay, thank you. That's uh -huh. all I have to have. Thank that's you. Fine. Okay, that's all on the, the, the public comment portion. And uh, next, in your agenda, there are some announcements. I'll just go over them quickly. Um, on Saturday, the 17th, we have, along with West Galveston Island Property Owners Association, our annual hurricane emergency preparedness, um, rescue, <coughs> evacuation, and recovery. So we've got a lot of great speakers lined up. Uh, Jerry Moan with Wiggy Pola and, and Robert have been working real hard, so that's at 10 o'clock. Uh, we are still finalizing feeding everybody afterwards, um, but, but Way West Grill has volunteer to do some stuff, but, but Lighthouse has traditionally done it in the past as well. So I can't tell you if you're getting pizza or hot dogs, but hope, hope not knowing what's on the menu won't deter your uh, coming in and uh, participating in the meeting. And then also, don't forget to make a beach fire department. Their annual fundraiser is coming up. It's on Saturday, July 1st. And uh, you should have all received invites in the mail. And of course, any extra donations are always appreciated by the fire department for that. And then also JDIC has host, is sponsoring, hosting, really it's just advertising. Our annual citywide garage sale is this Saturday as well. So, um, okay, so from announcements, uh, next we're to um, City Council, our Alderman reports. Uh, oh, Chief Garibay, his report is attached in the packet. Uh, to look at it in more detail, if you go to the website and go down, you can see it. And. Uh, Robert, do you have anything on yours that you'd like to address? No, you made the announcement. Uh, it's in the report, is in there, back. Uh, the other thing I would like to point out is Robert's been working real hard uh, with the insurance uh, group, and uh, he was able to, through our processes and procedures, uh, get us a reduction in our, or a improvement in our rating, which will give you guys 
a reduction in your insurance rates. You'll so, see it probably next fall. Um, so we, we did get that improved rating, so, so Robert's been working hard on that. Um, anyway, so, okay, now on to Alderman reports. Alderman Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Um, last Tuesday, uh, along with uh, Mr. Clintero and uh, Chief Garibay, um, I went to the FEMA meeting. It was really a, um, a Galveston County disaster meeting that had all, all of the, all, a lot of the organizations that, are, that will be there to help us um, if we have a disaster situation. The state and county have plans in place for when, when disaster hits. I also learned that the school districts are offering help. They're all offering school buses for evacuations, propane, and school buildings for shelter. There's a church, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who's willing to send in semi-trucks with supplies and volunteers for free um, to help us recover. Um, another organization, Texar, I found very fascinating, that um, um, is a search and rescue group that's all volunteer, and they work, also work for cities for free. So I wanted to be sure to pass that on to our city. And uh, of course, Saturday there's going to be, um, on the 17th, there'll be lots of this kind of stuff. But it's very informative. Um, and be sure that, uh, you know, you, you come to the meeting and and, uh, and you're able to talk to these individuals um, in person. And um, next, um, Oh, the overall message from this meeting is Texans helping Texans. And um, we're not alone. All of these organizations will be there to help repair us, rescue, and recover after any disaster event. Um, also, I printed out my certificates for taking the Open Records and Open Meeting Act training. Um, Mr. Quintero, would you, since we don't have a city secretary yet, I'm going to give you my copies, and that way you can place it into my file. <coughs> and. Um, these things should always be available um, to, for anyone to see that we've taken that training. As a reminder, elected and appointed officials and committees need to take this training and provide a copy of that to the city. And Mayor, may I suggest that our city staff also take this um, training? As a mayor? Yes. As a matter of fact, everybody's supposed to take the open, open meetings record. Open meetings and open records. And open records for your file. Just to let y'all know. If you, it's only good for two years, so if you had it last year, it's still good. But if you haven't in the last two years, you need to get up. It's, it's available on YouTube. And mm. you can go that route. I'm sorry. Exactly my point. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I'll I don't, I don't have anything to report to this meeting. Okay. This council meeting. Uh, I'll notes. Huge thank you to all volunteers that work the park. Um, I was not able to attend to do uh, family obligations, but my understanding was that it was a great event and that it was well received and, uh, and again, thank you everyone who volunteered their precious time to make that happen. Thank you. Alderman Green? I don't have anything. All right. Alderman Green? Nothing at this time. Okay. Uh, all right. Moving on to our new business. Um, first up is discussion and consideration to possibly take action to appoint Robert Quintero, Director of Operations, as the Interim City Secretary. Do I have a motion to discuss? I'll make oh. that motion to discuss. Okay. I second. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, as y'all all know, Georgia has uh, resigned. She was our Interim City Secretary. Debbie, our Primary City Secretary, resigned and left March 31st. So. Um, from a staff transition perspective, Ms. Esther Abrigo uh, came on in NOLA's position as the water clerk, um, but has shown outstanding aptitude for finances, invoicing, payrolls, uh, tracking the multitude of issues we have, taking care of payroll checks, workers' comp, you know, the list goes on and on. So, what we're going to do for an interim time period is Esther is going to be our finance clerk and manage the day-to-day the -day oversight of our, of our finances. Robert will take on the required by Texas general law duties of the city secretary, um, which basically is document owner 
and, and also assisting with city council and all the necessary sort of stamps and approvals uh, that are required. So Rob will be taking, Robert will be taking on that role. Uh, to help offload Robert a little bit from his already way full schedule, Jessica Sark, who's been doing permits, Jessica is going to take on a little more of the oversight responsibility for our day-to-day -day activities. So how we're spending money on managing beach cleanup, park mowing, and, and all of the, the minor maintenance things that the city requires. Uh, Jessica will be helping, like I said, offload Robert on that. Um, and then Jennifer Morse has, uh, was hired on to be kind of a, a general helper, assistant court clerk, as well as help us with managing our short-term rentals. And Jessica has moved into court clerk position. Um, Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> All these J's. <laughs> so uh, she's going to be taking over uh, as court clerk and is doing a wonderful job. Our Judge Pat Mox has been working hand in hand with her to streamline our court processes. And uh, already the improvement in court revenue we've seen is pretty outstanding. Uh, we also implemented a new system this week. It's called Connect it allows you to text to the city so if you can't get a message to us or if we don't answer the phone and you don't feel like voicemailing you can text us it goes to a main mailbox and then uh, from that mailbox it gets sent to the correct person and it allows that individual to text you back so uh, it's definitely streamlining our court process uh, Jennifer used to spend many many hours on the phone listening to the, well, let me tell you what happened. And, uh, you know, she's like, I'm not the judge and I'm not the prosecutor. So uh, that's already being effective. And we see ways we can use this with permits uh, and really just another avenue for everyone to communicate with the city. Um, so uh, anyway, saying all that, we would like to. I have a, qu I have a question, please. Yes. Is uh, Jennifer and Jessica, are they full-time or part-time? They are both full-time. Full-time. Okay. Do I have a motion to vote? I'll second that. Did somebody, did you motion no, to vote? No, I'll, I'll make a motion. Just okay. a second. Uh, motion to appoint Robert Quintero, uh, Director of Operations as the interim city secretary. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. All, all in favor? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Robert. You don't get a vote. <laughs> okay, the next item on our agenda is the Board of Review Board meeting. Uh, this is a discussion and consideration to possibly take action to approve modifications to the holiday schedule for City Hall employees. Um, last year, as you all know, June, Juneteenth was recognized as a federal holiday. Uh, when we went out and did some investigation, we're one of the few municipalities that do not recognize Martin Luther King and Juneteenth. Um, but we were also one of the only municipalities that actually give New Year's Eve off. <laughs> so we kind of struck a compromise. So we're proposing that we add Martin Luther King and Juneteenth as our official holidays, but then we remove New Year's Eve. So do we have any discussion? Uh, motion to discuss oh, sorry, approving you. modification <laughs> uh, to the holiday schedule for city hall employees. Okay, I'll second that. All right. So, any further discussion? Question. Is then New Year's Eve going to be a, a half day for those employees? We usually let them leave early. Okay. <laughs> but we'll post that on the schedule. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason for this is to be competitive with the municipalities. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. All right, any further discussion? Okay. Motion to vote on discussion and consideration. Motion to approve modifications to the holiday schedule for city hall employees. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? All right. Okay, um, next on the agenda is discussion and consideration to possibly take action 
to approve resolution 2023-08, appointing Gil Madre as Mayor Pro Tempore. Um, do I have a motion to discuss? I'll make that motion to discuss. Second. I'll second. Okay. Um, here again by Texas general law, the, the mayor has to uh, recommend and city council has to appoint a mayor pro tem. The term is for one year. And uh, Russell's generous service of, in that role has expired. And uh, and based on the overwhelming number of votes that Mr. Madre received at the election, uh, I'm recommending that we vote him in as the mayor pro tem for Any other discussion? Okay, motion to vote on approving uh, resolution 2023-08 appointing Gil Madre as mayor pro tempore. I'll make that motion to approve um, resolution 2023-8 appointing Gil Madre as mayor pro tem. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, all opposed? No, You're in favor? Okay. I didn't raise my hand quick though. Okay. Uh, opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Okay. Um, that doesn't provide a quorum though, right? No, you have three votes. Do you, well, do you no. abstain? No, you have a quorum if you have three votes. Do you have three votes? Uh, can Gil vote on himself? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Okay. Gil, how do you vote? <laughs> I can't vote, can I? Yes, you can. Yeah, yes, you, you can. do. I vote cash. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Okay, next is discussion and consideration, possibly action to approve the director of operations and mayor to negotiate a contract for curbside trash pickup with the Merrill Ace. We, uh, do I have a motion to discuss? I'll make that motion. I okay, Robert Mayor, we had to post a RFP. It went out. Uh, we had several inquiries about it. We had a, our pre-conference here. We had two uh, companies here for the pre-RFP conference. Uh, we mailed up, emailed six other uh, RFP packages out. We came back. The deadline came um, May 24th. Uh, only one company presented a, pack, a, a bid package, and that was in Maryland, so we're asking permission from the council to negotiate contracting. Okay, any other? Uh, Ameriways is our current provider. Correct. Um, and we've actually not seen a rate increase from them, and we've been going month to month on our contract with them for how many months now, Robert? At least uh, since uh, November. Yeah, so uh, it is time to negotiate a new contract. But um, any other discussion? The only thing I can say is they do a good job at my house. Yeah, so I think we've been happy with them. We'll, we'll work hard to negotiate uh, a good rate. They also provide our dumpsters, and they provide extra dumpster pickup when we need it in the summertime. So uh, and, and we'll make sure to, to add that consideration uh, to our negotiation. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I'll make, I'll make that motion. As stated? Yes. Negotiate conference. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is uh, discussion and consideration to possibly take action approving resolution 2023 04, authorizing participation in the TIPS purchasing cooperative offered by Region 8 Education Service Center. Do I have a motion to discuss? I'll make that motion to discuss. All right. I'll second. Okay. Um, TIPS did a presentation for us at the last meeting. Um, most of the municipalities in, in, in Texas and the region are part of some purchasing cooperative. There's actually two others um, that we'll probably be bringing forward. There's a Galveston Houston one. Uh, and I forget. Uh, yes. And um, 
So um, they do provide a streamlined effort for us to get low cost options on data. <coughs> so um, we're not required to use them, uh, but just having them available if, if we want to use them, um, I, I feel is a good option for the city and a way to streamline some of the burden on some of our more straightforward um, needs and requirements. So, uh, anyway, anybody else have any discussion, comments? I was for this a long time ago. <laughs> so okay. Do we have a motion to? Motion to approve, that's stated. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. Got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, next uh, is the discussion and consideration to possibly take action to appoint Steve Hildago to the Planning and Zoning Commission. We have a motion to discuss. Motion to discuss uh, taking action to appoint Steve Hildago to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. Um, Steve, if you'd stand up for a minute. Uh, Steve Hildago comes with a background uh, in accounting and in a, a lot of general life experience. We did have one of our planning and zoning commissioners uh, move, um, so because he moved, he had to resign, uh, leaving a vacancy. And, and uh, we posted it on various avenues to, to see who was interested, and uh, Mr. Hildago stepped forward and said he'd like to help. Uh, so. Do you guys have any questions for Steve or like to know a little more about I, his background? I'd just like to say thank you for coming to the meeting so we have a chance to meet you. Oh, sure. that. Yeah, <laughs> look forward to working for the mayor and for all of you guys and the citizens. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Motion to approve as stated. Make a motion that we approve the deal. Okay. To the planning and zoning. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Um, next on the item is discussion and consideration to possibly take action on approving hiring branch construction to rebuild and repair wastewater lift station number seven uh, in an amount not to exceed 135000 Um Do I have a motion to discuss? I'll make that motion to discuss. Second. Okay. Um, I mean, I have a little bit of input on this. As we, um, we, were, we got the engineering. Robert went out for bids. We received two bids. Um, branch construction was the low bid. And, but as, as we've gotten into more detailed discussions of their bid and the options, we feel that there is a more cost-effective means um, that won't delay uh, execution of this project to any extensive amount, but to stay, uh, anyway, we, we need our full, fully engineered, agreed upon solution, which will re result in some cost savings before we can actually move forward with council's approval for this. So next week, we're going to have Branch working with Mercer on a few tweaks to the design, um, which should expedite the installation process and, and make it a, a faster fix, as well as a more cost-effective fix. So at this point, I'm recommending we, we table this and bring it forth again uh, on the next meeting in two weeks with a slightly tweaked engineering design and a more cost-effective solution. So, uh, any comments on that? Uh, do I have a motion to table? Motion to table. Second? I second that. Okay, all in favor? Who votes to make a motion? Uh, uh, the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> the big guy. Okay, that finishes our new business. And uh, on to the mayor's report. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all. And I want to thank you all for your patience as all of our new staff is getting up to speed. Um, one thing I didn't mention in explaining Robert's position as city secretary is that we did post Nola's job. 
Uh, we pleasantly had an overwhelming positive response in applicants. Uh, we narrowed that down to uh, five, well, it was six, one actually didn't call in. For phone call interviews, we interviewed three more individuals today. Um, city staff was in concurrence that the individual we're gonna hire um, is a lady, Miss Tina Sefuentes. Um, she's agreed to our offer and we'll be starting Monday. So she comes with a, a extensive background. Um, yes, we can post her resume. If I have to have her permission first before I can post it, but you're all welcome to look through her resume. Uh, she has years of experience in, in different administrative roles. Uh, she coordinated Special Olympics for the South Texas region. She's a super dynamic lady, super um, proficient on the computer, great ideas and just a real people person so i think as you'll enjoy you'll enjoy having her her smiling accommodating face in the office um, then um, secondly um, we are hopefully got all the phone systems resolved today we have a fairly complex phone system that takes hours on the phone to work through so now when you call up here you should get the right voicemail and the right phone number. Uh, we've been shifting some, so didn't want to have to go through that process multiple times, but I think Jessica got it licked today. And also, <coughs> we're still working on support for the website. Um, we actually have been struggling to find the right support mechanism for that. We're slowly tweaking at it to get all the information updated. And, and then we're working on setting a test site up where we can make the website a little more, a little more proactive and easier to navigate and uh, better to post things on. Then, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, my biggest priority over the last couple of weeks really has been around budget. So with departure of two city secretaries, our current system is not as up to date as it should be in current financials. So I've been working on understanding our status and where we're at. And Debbie, our previous city secretary, has, has come in a few times and helped. Um, Esther and Debbie, and we sat up here Sunday for a very long, long time and made great progress. And Debbie's coming back again next week to help. So by the next city council meeting on June 22nd, I should have an update of our financial status. I know on our municipal side, with all the water breaks we've had, um, we are in the red. But I can't tell you exactly how much, but in two weeks, I'll be able to tell you where we're at. And we'll be having to take forward an amendment to our budget uh, to accommodate that, um, that shortfall. So, um, like I said, that's, that's been really my priority the last couple of weeks, is just to get us up to speed on, we were, Anyway, we, we had a lot of hurdles to overcome the last, the last two weeks, and Esther's been jumping through hoops to help us get there. And, um, yeah, get that through. Okay, and by mid-July, we should have the first draft of our one to five year plan. So, been working with Mercer Engineering and with the support of some additional citizens in the community, laying out some options on how we can address all of our water issues and how we can put a plan together and figure out how to fund it. So, uh, and also I know Russell had brought this forward at previous council meetings. Currently, with the rates we're being charged water from the city, um, the municipal, the municipality of, the, of our city, the sewer and water and trash operation, it should be like a business. So the revenue we bring in from it should cover our expenses. And right now we're not doing that. So on the water side, irregardless of the water breakages, we've absorbed as a city increases from Galveston for a while. So uh, in the next couple of months, we'll be bringing forward a presentation on where we're at with that, what our expenses have been, where we're working to cut them, uh, and how we pass our cost of water on to you, the customer. So that'll be coming forward in, in the next month or two as well. Um, and 
on a positive note, you've seen Branch out there. We're, they're, they're really doing a good job on getting phase four in. And uh, I don't think there's been too many faux pas. Whenever they can, they've gone under people's, um, they're going through some places where there's dry lots. And so where there's dry lots that come together, the citizens, the owners, the residents are allowed to fence uh, to the property line, but yet there's legal easements through the back. And Branch has been very helpful in boring under areas where it would disturb residents' fences or landscaping so that that doesn't have to be ripped down and put back. Um, and they, they have absorbed a little of the cost of doing that. Some of that cost was incorporated into the bid, but those of you that are impacted, I hope you appreciate that they're going under, not, not through. Uh, and one more note is we have been working on our Blackboard system. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out on the window. So uh, we've been, been working on developing more systematic ways to communicate when we have issues, when we have water leaks, uh, and especially as hurricane season approaches. We really appreciate getting the word out to, to all your neighbors to make sure their Blackboard information is updated because that is the fastest way for us to communicate any evacuation or any special messages, as well as water leaks and when we hope to have it back on. So that's all I have for my mayor's report. Um, at this time, we have to convene into executive session, so I do have to ask that, that we leave. Um, we have a legal matter to discuss with our attorneys, and uh, it needs to be held in executive session. And then we'll come back after that executive session and if there's any action that needs city council approval based on that, that discussion, um, that will be voted on here again in open meeting.